and we are live good evening everyone welcome to it korean australia live stream and tonight's topic is interview skills you need to get um you need to get hired in it industry you need to get the skills get hired you know you just need to get it <laughs> thank you so much for finding some time this evening to join our live discussion so as usual please introduce yourselves in the comments let us know what you do if you're looking for some new role at the moment are you interviewing anywhere else right now so please just drop it in the comments so we know who's here today if you're new to my live show Obviously, I'm Jana Martins, and I'm currently working in IT consultancy myself. So I'm passionate about learning more about present and future of IT industry and also sharing some, some of my new findings on your YouTube channel. So tonight, as I said, we're talking about interview skills you need to get hired in IT industry. And Eli is going to share his experience, you know, his um, career coaching skills, and all these top skills you need to gain to prepare for your next interview. So it's pretty valuable topic, especially for those, you know, who on low watch out for the new role. So make sure to share this stream with the friends and colleagues that need to hear this. Um, this before I pass it on, pass it over to Eli to introduce himself. Just wanted to remind you quickly that we're going live as usual on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. So if you want to watch replays, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, IT Korean Australia. I'm going live there every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Melbourne time with various experts from my network. And we're talking about various things around um, IT career, job search, and specifics of IT industry in Australia. Also encourage you to join my meetup group to make sure you get notifications about upcoming um, events. We might have some um, live events, face-to-face um, -face events coming next year as well. So, you know, uh, keep you posted. And um, encourage you to ask as many questions as you want as long as you stay on the topic. And I always encourage you to use this live stream not only to um, gain some new knowledge, but also to network with people from the industry as well. So again, I really hope that you pop your name in the comments because if you're not doing it, I don't know that you're here and you know we don't know who we're talking with today. So make sure to do this. And while you're doing that, I'm going to pass it to Eli to introduce himself, please. Thank you, Jana. Hi, everyone uh, joining in uh, live on, on this uh, IT Careers AU page. Uh, my name is Eli and i'm based here in newcastle and i've been a recruiter for quite some time and i've decided to coach people in in, in tech and i hope i can share some insightful information with you today so you can get out, out of something and you know do better in your, in your next interviews perfect um thank you eliza we have quite a few people joining us today uh, some people don't have names on their YouTube channels, but saying hi. <laughs> uh, make sure to put your name when you're saying hi, guys, because uh, <laughs> otherwise we can't call you by name. Rebecca is here. Um, this is a perfect timing since I just got an interview schedule for next <coughs> week um, as IT support. Here we go. Great, Rebecca. Awesome, I think you Rebecca. were like um, here last week and you already got the interview. Here we go. <laughs> perfect. Um, and hello, Jana. This is um, Simrik from Nepal. Thank you guys for joining us. So again, I can see that a lot of you are watching, but you're just not commenting. So please just pop your name so we know that you're here. Um, anyway, so um, obviously, Lai already, you know, give us a brief introduction, but would love to learn a bit more about you and, uh, you know, why you're actually passionate about this topic today. So if you, you know, give us a bit of an overview um, of your career and you know while you why you're here today sure um i've been a recruiter since forever um since ever since i finished university and been doing this for 10 years uh, especially in the tech industry roughly a year and a half ago i decided to, you know i also want to share my knowledge through a coaching and uh, i've built a careerzcoaching.com so if you want to have a look at that on your own time, please feel free to do so. Um, I've worked at companies like um, like basically mostly startups, tech startups, Mantle Group, Airwallex, 
Rob job based in Melbourne. And um, most recently, I'm working now at uh, Atlassian as a technical recruiter there as well. A bit about me. I like uh, adventure, adventure motorcycles, uh, you know, go out into the wild and uh, just be in nature because I sit a lot and work from home. So it's nice to get out. Obviously, um, a dog lover. I have a small, medium sized husky cross Kelpie at home. And good news, I'm going to be a dad soon. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, guys, put in my contact details <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Jana. I appreciate it. <laughs> put my contact details there if you want to uh, connect with me uh, via LinkedIn or email. Feel free to do so. I like how you said like a medium sized husky. <laughs> mm. Doesn't mean it's just not huge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> they can get really big, you know. So we have a. Yeah, it's probably still 40 kilograms <laughs> no oh my god no <laughs> thank god not it's 25 actually so it's, it's, 25. it's manageable okay. okay yeah it is yeah. it is again okay. it is manageable at least you can you know pick it up if you really need to <laughs> okay so guys um you know still waiting for you to introduce yourselves in the comments and while you're doing this um we'll just um you know dig straight into the topic so um I guess, you know, we not going to stop too much on the, you know, resume or LinkedIn and things like this, because it's, a, you know, massive topics as well. We're really trying to concentrate on interview skills today um, and really cover, you know, what you need to do actually when you get get to this interview. But I guess, um, you know, what are the basics, uh, Eli? Do you want to just like walk us through a little bit, um, you know, the basics anyway? So, um Everyone that is watching right now, when we, when we cover the basics, what I mean here is basically the basics that you need to have in your resume, okay? So I, I, I look at resumes probably on a week, on an average 100 to 250 resumes a week. So a recruiter, when they look at a resume, they don't have much time. They scan and they, they're done within like six to seven seconds, okay? So that's why you need to make sure that you have these basics that Jana showed earlier, um, starting with you know, contact details, you wouldn't believe it of how many people forget their email or mobile number. So I'm like, just how, how can I contact you now? You know, so you have your email, you have your LinkedIn, you have your mobile number. And if you have any professional websites, you add them there as well. You know, you, you might have a GitHub account or a personal website, please put that in there. Your profile summary underneath shouldn't be long. Okay. So you want to focus on what value can you offer the potential employer? And maybe you could even highlight a key achievement that you had in your last role. Again, this is going to pique the interest of the reader. That's what you need to do. Okay. Skills and certifications is the next. Um, I like to put that after profile summary because as a, I guess, a recruiter, you need to find people that are able to do the job right away. So this is going to help the reader again. Oh, okay. They have the right skills. I, I'm going to continue reading it. And then you have your work experience. You start with your most recent first. You keep it very relevant. You focus on the results, the impact that you have in your roles, and you, you're going to explain the tech stack as well. So if you're in the tech industry, you need to explain tech stack, tech, technology environment. If you're not in the IT industry, you could focus on just the results. Then you have your education. Um, I always recommend my, my clients also to put in hobbies or interests. It could be work related or outside of work. Um, and this is a great uh, rapport building uh, tool that you could, you know, maybe speaking to a recruiter or hiring manager, maybe you have the same or common interest. And now you have, a, I guess, a, a way to connect with them, which is really, really good in during interview. Lastly, if you have career gaps uh, that, that are longer than three months, I would definitely recommend to you to put them in there. Otherwise, there will be assumptions on, from the recruiter side to, you know, you have been out of work, why? And you don't want to have those assumptions. Yeah. Definitely. So I've, um, I've, I've, I've added yeah. there. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, you can talk over me. No problem. <laughs> yeah. So basically, 
you know, I just want to mention this uh, basics because people always like to ask about the resumes, but, um, you know, um, the resume is basically just, you know, that brochure that gets us in front of the people and uh, that, uh, you know, the, the main thing is actually what we're doing in the interviews. We actually had a few um, previous live streams that we've been covering interview really in the details. Mm. So, guys, if you, um, you know, if you're really interested uh, to uh, learn more about resumes, look, look at the few live streams before we did one with Beck and we did one with... Um, um jonathan as well so i really recommend if you really like still like trying to nail your resume go back to this live streams to you know to cover those basics that eli just just mentioned so okay so let's assume we had our perfect resume we start like you know getting some calls from recruiters from hiring managers and so on so what's next you know what what do we need to do after that we're excited because we we got our first interview <laughs> yeah that's a huge achievement isn't it uh so first of all you need to i guess know what type of interview you're going for so in case you're speaking to a recruiter ask them it could be a, a recruiter screen where they're trying to assess who you are if you're fit for the role etc cetera, etc cetera. If it's a technical interview, you need to prepare differently. If it's a management interview or a final interview, you need to prepare differently. So you need to know what type of interview you're going for, number one. And you, you do that by asking the person that you are in contact with, usually the recruiter, what kind of interview is this recruiter? Uh, how can I prepare for it? So please always make sure that you ask those kind of questions to the people that you are, I guess, speaking to. And the thing is, uh, I'm glad that you, you know, put it as a first point because um, quite often, you know, uh, sometimes you talk with technical persons, sometimes you talk with like maybe hiring manager right. that's high up and more worried about the business direction and things like that. And you really need to adjust what you're going to talk about on, on mm. those interviews instead of just thinking, okay, so I'm going for software engineering position. I'm just going to, you know, tell everything I know about Java. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, then you failed, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah, yep. Especially for the recruiter, right? So you need to basically adjust your communication, as you rightly said. Uh, you need to know, um, yeah, I will get into that actually in, in, in a bit so we can maybe save it mm -hmm. for later. Um, yeah, yeah. So looking at, at the slides here, um, you want to obviously be able to, I guess, repeat what you have written down in your resume. If you can't do that, that's a really bad sign. So make sure that you know what you have done and you can talk about that confidently uh, during any interview. If you can't do that, that's a really big red flag. That's actually right. a really um, good point, you know, because sometimes yeah. you're like, oh, you mentioned in your resume that you've done that. And then the person go blank and you're like, oh, <laughs> why well, it's in your resume. The yeah, it's, it's, uh, it happens a lot. And it's, it's, uh, that's why everyone listening today, I definitely want you to encourage you. Read your resume carefully before you go in. Write down what you have done, what you're proud of, and communicate that. Cool. Um, also, very important, research the people that you're going to meet. Um, the recruiter usually would tell you uh, you're going to meet X person and X person. Awesome. So you now you have the internet available to you. You can uh, look through LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere. And you can even Google their name. And the reason why I want you to do that is because it could give you some signs around the, the personality. Um, it could make you less nervous because, you know, you see they, are, they have a family, they have a dog, they have people as well. Oh, and maybe I'm going to become friends with them eventually if I start working there. So this could all help you. Um, I guess, calm yourself and be prepared in your mind. Uh, don't, so Definitely. you are interviewing. And I think like, you know, yeah. a lot of, yeah. yeah. It, again, like, and you can ask recruiter as well to tell you a little bit more about, uh, you know, hiring manager, because, you know, if some recruiters had a, you know, good, uh, good relationship with the client, they probably can give you more details, you know, if you, if you ask. Yeah. If you don't ask, you don't know. So I would definitely try to ask lots of questions. Um, and that brings me to the next point, questions. Um, don't 
go on Google and just type in interview questions, good interview questions. That's not good because you need, every interview is an opportunity for you to find out more about this place, the place that you're applying for. Because at the end of the day, you're going to interview and you want to get the job. But what if the job that you're actually going for is not a good place to work for? And that's a big, big problem because now you made a bad, bad decision and you maybe missed the other good opportunity. So you want to ask thoughtful, impactful questions that could be related to what it's going to be like when you work there. But in a good, a good question, for example, you could ask the person that you're interviewing with, what kind of conflict did you have recently in the team and how did you resolve it? Interesting. Now you get some really great data from them as well. Just an idea. Yeah, so challenge them as well as, uh, you know, not yeah. only you need to be challenged, you can challenge your interviewers as well. And this is going to make a good impression on them especially if these questions are tough and thoughtful. Um, <laughs> this is very, very important. Please get this right. You want to have a, a very, I guess, organized environment and a functioning camera, a, not a messy background. Change your background to a virtual one if it's messy. Make sure the microphone is working, your headset is working. The quality needs to be good. So these are all very important things in 2022. You know, you wouldn't go to an interview face to face before COVID with you know t-shirt and, and sandals. You know, you want to be professional also on camera and you want to show that to them because that shows you take this serious, you, you know, you're careful, you qual you're quality oriented. So very important. And I think also one thing that uh, people sometimes forget is actually check the link uh, that you've been given mm. before the interview. We all know how sometimes, you know, uh, Microsoft Teams or Google Hangouts suddenly don't work. Or you're trying right, to join right. on the phone and it's not working. You're trying to join on the desktop. It's not working on desktop. So it's definitely like a really good practice. Check the link like half an hour before you interview as well. So you have a time to actually um, email the recruiter, email the person to say that actually the link is not working or, or anything like that. Because I think that happens like... 50% of the time. It happens a lot, yeah, for sure. That's a really good tip and very valuable. Um, sometimes you need to download the, the, the Zoom, for example. So mm. doing that will save you a lot of um, panic because if you're late, you panic and it's not great. Yeah, yeah. And you're already, you know, getting nervous that uh, yeah, exactly. technology is not going to, yeah. Um, get yourself motivated and excited. Uh, this is something that I, I give you a personal example. Um, when I was interviewing at my previous company, uh, I <laughs> I would do push-ups and just to get myself hyped up a little bit and be more uh, enthusiastic about it as well. Because you, the first three seconds when you join the call and they see you and then you talk to them, that's it's very important three, four, five seconds. So you want to make a good impression. That's the first impression that you're making. Another thing that you could do is you could change your background to the company logo. Something, something small gives you another point to talk about so you can think about these things but definitely you know some people need coffee um which brings me actually when you inter book an interview with the let's say you passed your recruiter call and you're invited to the next round you should then think about okay when am i when am i really awake and when am i really i guess sharp in my mind it's probably more afternoon because i'm not a morning person so you want to push your meetings your interviews to the afternoon knowing that so you can perform better again it really matters that's actually a really good point because you know like maybe sometimes people want to book you for like 8 a.m in the morning yeah. <laughs> and Push you back, know that yeah. you just you still like foggy at 8 a.m and yeah, I didn't have my coffee. To reach for the coffee <laughs> or some people can't function at 4 p.m you know they wake up at 6 and they you know get all the things done that's a, that's a really good point like you know if, if you're serious about the interview yeah trying to arrange it at the time that you you most um uh, most productive and you're in the, in the mm. right right set of mind sometimes you forget about it yeah that's right uh and the last last point is um interviewing is an is a skill and the more you practice it on camera off camera with someone the better it is for you during the interview so if you can practice with your partner maybe with your dog uh definitely 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 encourage you to do that um it will help you again feel more confident and do better during interviews as well 
I would love to see if you're husky, like try asking, asking the doc. Do you understand? I am a good candidate. <laughs> I can code. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're high. Uh, yeah, gone. Ja James has a question. Um, if the recruiter has right. given you a bad link, what's an issue with the setup on the recruiters recruiters end? You shouldn't be calling them outside the meeting time. Uh, so James, I, I believe what he's saying is outside of the meeting time. So bef before or after? Before? before? I would call before, um, just yeah. in case, to be honest. Yeah, recruiters make mistakes. Obviously, we're all human. Um, if you tested the link and didn't work, I would encourage everyone to email the recruiter right away and just tell them, and then it will be rectified in that moment. Sometimes it, may, it could happen that the recruiter can't or something happened, they might need to reschedule. So just, I guess, play it by the ear there. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that yeah. answers no, the question. But Yeah, I definitely, uh, definitely would check because, yeah, sometimes maybe link is not working because the person need to admit you to the meeting as well. But yeah, I would yeah. I would always just double check because yeah, yeah you never know. If you, you never know. Um, if you have the mobile number in the email address and you know it's five minutes before your interview, call them up. That's also totally fine. Um, you're doing everything that you can during the interview, so definitely check it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, no, for sure. Um, and yeah, so I think again. Ooh, did we, yeah, you're back. I'm, I think it's my yeah, internet sorry. connection. Yeah, you're freezing a bit, but I think oh, it's, it's you right oh, it's now. Oh, it's me? We're back, we're back. <laughs> I don't know. Someone's we're back. back. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think, you know, your, <laughs> I think your next, you know, your next point is actually about that, um, about, you know, like uh, how to, you know, communicate with recruiters and uh, when, you, when you're having your first like screening interview and um, back to this point about um, giving a call to recruiter five minutes before if the link is not working. Uh, it is, uh, you know, quite important just to make sure you have your recruiter's number. Like you, you need to remember mm. who actually put you put you through to this job, um, and save this number. You know how many times um, uh, you just don't you didn't save the number of the person who like you know the recruiting person, and you don't know who to call, or they calling you and you don't know it's them calling you. Yeah, that's 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 also not good practice. That <laughs> uh, you don't know. Oh, sorry, is this a vet? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, but okay. So, let's talk about you know first round, basically. You know the first okay. screening interview when we just got to recruit, and I really like this picture because uh, you know <laughs> I've seen this picture before, but there is definitely <laughs> so good. And, and this one. <laughs> um, so that picture is really good because you should, in your mind, if I can get this person who is a recruiter. This could be an agency recruiter or an internal recruiter. These are two different things. If I can build a bond, a relationship with them in the first interview, they're going to be my advocate in the company or for the company. So the better that conversation goes, the better your chances are to get an interview uh, or to get hired, essentially. So you want to make sure when you speak to a recruiter, you don't want to use so much jargon or technical language because they might not understand everything that you're saying so you, they will have certain questions prepared for you because what they're trying to do is assess are you a good or potential candidate for the role so they will ask standard questions i've put a few examples there um you know tell me about yourself they're not asking for your whole life story they're asking for a quick pitch about who you are what you're doing and why you're here today um what are your main skills uh, again you always want to be con concise and they will ask probing questions if they need more information. Why are you looking for a new role? This is a very important question. It gives a lot of signals around the candidates' um, motivations. Are they um, looking for something specific or are they more open for other things? So if they're looking for something specific, for example, and I only have, I guess, one role and the specific doesn't fit into that one role, then you will not be invited to the next round because you, your expectations are very different to what I can actually offer you. So this might happen. Um, 
sometimes when you apply for a role and we will apply for many roles because we're looking for a new role, you need to track somewhere what kind of roles you have applied for. And you need to know exactly the reason why you've applied for this role specifically. If you don't have a good reason, it's, a, it's not a good impression you're making on the recruiter. So keep that in mind. Um, I think, you know, the, to, the, to the point, um, to your point about, you know, fitting the particular position. Yeah, sometimes the recruiter might call mm. about a particular position, but it doesn't mean that they have other positions available. And if you, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not giving, you know, your kind of uh, true answer about what you're actually looking for and what you're passionate about, you can actually miss out on other position as well. So, yeah. you know, as much as we want to kind of uh, give the answer about particular position, we don't want to just try to, you know, give the speech that uh, <laughs> completely irrelevant to what you actually want to do just because you want to interview this particular company because uh, yeah. the recruiter will keep you on file and, uh, you know, something else might pop up, pop up with exactly what you're looking for. So, 100%, 100%. That's really good. And it might happen today, tomorrow or in like a month. So very, very true. Yeah. Um, we talked about building rapport with, with the recruiter as much as you can. Um, again, you want to keep everything that you're doing during any interview relevant for the position that you're applying. So imagine, you know, you, you want Mexican and I'm trying to sell you Italian. It doesn't, it's not going to work. So you want to make sure, you know, you speak, you, you want to address Mexican, everything. In our case, it would be, um, Let's say it's a software engineering position for backend. You want to keep it on the backend, not on the front end. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. The there's no tip. point to tell your whole your your whole um, uh, work experience. Then you know you <laughs> you apply for yeah. backend, and only like your I don't know last two position was backend. There is no point go back 15 years when you've been doing something completely different. Totally, totally right, and. Um, Usually, in, at least in the tech industry, the last five years are most cru crucial and most important for the role that you're applying for, at least in my opinion. Yeah, yeah with the technology. Um, yeah, it's just changing so quickly. And this is something that could help you during an interview as well. Think about what are three things that I want to communicate to the recruiter, to the hiring manager, etc. So what are the three things? So just write them down. Uh, it could be, for example... I'm going to communicate this one achievement that I had in my previous job. I was very proud. So you want to know what, what, what you did. I want to communicate that I'm um, actively looking and that I'm available on this date. Uh, I, want to, I want to be very transparent. I want to be honest with the person that I'm speaking to. And I want to tell them that I'm interviewing with all these places. And this is the way I want to handle the, the whole interview process. Just maybe tra transparency and honesty. So this is going to help you be, again, a bit more confident. Uh, you know exactly what you're doing, where you're going. So this could help you as well. And I think it's, you know, overall, uh, when we're talking about, you know, preparing to the interview, like write it down, you know, write I think sometimes, sometimes that's the simple thing that people don't really do. Like, because the, these questions that you listed there, that's usually, you know, the main questions any recruiter will ask in the beginning, because it's mm. just, you know, the, the simple, like, tell me about yourself. Everyone will ask this question because firstly, mm -hmm. they want to just hear the story. And, um, you know, surprisingly, people still don't have that concise answer. It's like your yeah. elevator pitch, basically. Like you need to, you, you, I, anyone can wake you up at night and ask you, tell me about yourself. And <laughs> you should just wake up and give this like two minutes answer straight away. <laughs> it's given. <laughs> Yeah, it's not really given any, I don't think, but that's why it's good that we're that we're listing it today. Um, and uh, I, that, it brings me to the next point, Jana. Uh, you know, let's say you are talking and you're telling about yourself, but you're seeing the other person not engaging or not reacting. That's a sign for you to sum it up and then wait for them to respond. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you feel like that. if you feel like you're talking too much, it's probably because you're talking too much. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, i have definitely. I think um, Eli, I'm sure you've spoken with people who would start telling you know the basically summary of their whole resume uh, when they answer yes. the question about tell me about yourself. 
And that, that is, a, uh, unfortunately, a very um, a negative impression that you are getting from the candidate. And uh, usually those candidates are not being progressed in the next stage. So that's why if you're listening, please be mindful of that. This is a very important skill that you need to have. Yeah, just summarizing straight to the point, listing listing the main achievements here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we mentioned we have a few, quite a few uh, questions coming up. Um, you know, mm. let's just let's just take a few questions from the audience. Um, Manju is asking how to handle management interviews, like a call with CEO or CTO. What questions should we ask them? Um, definitely needs to be mature. Um, yeah, any points on that? CEO or CTO. So you have to imagine. They are not in the nitty gritty anymore. They are more strategic, more long term thinking. So you could ask questions around long term thinking, um, long term challenges, um, long term plans, um, long, long challenges that they have had in the last six months. And why is this role specifically going to help this challenge? Um, is there some things that come to mind right now? I think like if yeah. it's CEO, so if it's not a technical person, I would also ask uh, like a business related questions like, you know, mm. where do you see your business in in six months? Where do you see your business in one year? Like I would uh, definitely ask them sort of questions around business if it's yeah. if it's not a technical person, you know, not a technical person. Um, also, you're, if you're speaking to such a high person, right? The fact that you're speaking to them means you need to solve a problem for them. What is that problem that they want to be like you to solve? So asking, what is what is the biggest problem that you need me to solve? Could be a good one. Yeah, yeah. What are the challenges or like what's you know what's obstacles might come in the next six months to achieving that goal? Yeah. Yeah, I but think, just keep yeah, it high, high like, level. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely yeah not going into the yeah not going to the into the um details of the role itself i would think yeah some mm. more business level i hope that helps mind you the um. <laughs> there was a, actually yeah so you probably wouldn't start asking ceo the question that you uh mentioned before about the i don't know the conflict situation in the team <laughs> no no <laughs> That'd yeah, like, so well, that would be more like you know, something you ask the you know the team leader or someone. But yeah, mm -hmm. but you That's definitely right. kind of ask more questions on the on a high business level. Um, Rebecca is asking. Um, so answer and tell me about yourself. Uh, should be how long? So I don't know. I think it's like two three minutes uh, max. What, what what do you think? Mm -hmm. about? Um, there's no silver, like a golden, there's no one size fits all. Imagine you are having a dinner date and you're the only one talking. First time you're meeting them. That's not a good sign. And so I would personally say anywhere between two to five, maximum five minutes. That's probably a bit too long already. So two, three minutes max. That should suffice. Um, because essentially, Rebecca, what you need to do is Hey, um, I'm Rebecca. I work at this company. This company does X, Y, and Z, and I'm responsible for X, Y, and Z. Nice to meet you. That's all. And then, yeah, because that may be something it's about just yeah. context. Yeah. Yeah. And overall, like I've been in the industry for that long, and I'm passionate about this, and I would like to move in this direction. And uh, and uh, probably a good thing is also uh, finish with a question to the interviewing person and ask them like, would you like me to cover anything in the more details? Hmm, you could do that, yeah. Usually um, they will have a lot of questions for you, so that's why I would encourage everyone to be concise in their answers because they probably have a list of questions that they want to go through. If it's, if you eat up more time than you should, then they can't ask you all the questions that they need to, and they can't get the data that they need to make a decision on you as a candidate yeah yeah, yeah definitely um, yeah especially in this um, screening like a first screening interview mm. being like right straight to the point 
Yeah. Um, I think that's the main questions that actually related to the interviews. Guys, yeah, so please try to stay on the topic in terms of the um, in terms of the questions. Uh, Rebecca saying, I see sounds good. So giving context and opening topics for questions. Got it. Nice one, Perfect. Rebecca. You got this for your next week interview. <laughs> yeah, no ready for next week. <laughs> So um, I guess, and then we're going into more, I guess, details when once we get an interview. And we have actually another question for you guys. Um, how many of you actually know the STAR method? Um, and I guess most importantly, how many of you actually using this method? Because mm. <laughs> maybe a lot of us heard about the STAR method, but uh, how many actually using it, uh, especially when we go to the interview? So yeah, let us know in the comments and a lot like, yeah, why are we talking about the STAR method here? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, if you know it, just give a plus in the comments. So at least I can, I guess, get a sense for how many people know about this. Um, it's quite an important topic. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way basically to communicate something during the job interview. Okay, so you, your aim is to build com, build a complete picture for the listener of the situation, what happened, and the final outcome, or the result of it. Okay, so this that's basically, <laughs> it's hard, it's hard, uh, Murat. And <laughs> it is hard, because we're not used to talking this way. And we're not used to doing it. Uh, that's why uh, I want to encourage you to practice, you know, with your dog, your partner, with your coffee, uh, coffee maker, uh, <laughs> and, uh, around the corner. So when we break down the star method, uh, we have s situation and task. So this is where you set the context. This happened. This were the circumstances. This is the whole reason why we started the whole project. Let's say. Um, now, very important um, people we tend to say we all the time during an interview and that's not great because if you say we all the time i don't know what you did and that's not good because i need to know what you did because i'm trying to hire you so you need to make sure i did this and this and this and this was a team collaboration very important i say it again don't use we all the time you need to say i when it's i and when, when you say we when it's we so i need to know what you did exactly then the action. So, you know, how did you work on this project? What specific role did you take versus the team? So if you were the leader, you need to make sure that you explain exactly what you did as a leader during the project, for example. Um, and then the result. So here, you have done all of that. Awesome. But what was the result? Why did you do it? What, what kind of impact did it have on the team, on the project? How did, you know, how did you come about it? Um, and then this is the new, I guess, the evidence. You need to share exactly, okay, how did you monitor this? Or how, did, how did it affect the, I guess, the customer? How, what kind of result happened after um, you implemented a project? Or you could also say, I've done all of that. It didn't go according to plan, but I learned this from it. And this is how I would do it differently. That's also really good. So lessons learned and the, I guess the evidence of, of the result that you have had of the project, super important. And, you know, coming back to uh, Murad's comment. Yes, yeah, so Rebecca said that, yes, she, uh, I have used it before in the workplace reflections for uni. So she heard about it and Murad saying, I know, but I, I cannot use during the interview. Like, I don't know, I believe, and um, Eli, I would love to hear your opinion on that, but I, I feel like we tend to overthink uh, the situations um, or we basically don't think about enough situations before we go to interview. But if you really just sit down and think about, you know, a few examples, actually sit down and brainstorm examples from your workplace, you'll be quite surprised how many, how many of those star um star examples you can find we just probably we just don't spend enough time sitting down and writing those examples down mm. and then we get you know get basically get the question answered and we start, start trying to make it up make it up uh, as we go and that's yeah. where it's you know 
hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what I what I do with my clients is uh, because a lot of people like Murat they can't really do it during the interview. Is like what you said. Think about it first of all. Okay, what happened, right? Like what tends to do what happen what tends to happen during an interview is people just talk too much. So they use the star method. It's, it goes to 10, 15 minutes, and that's also not great. So what you need to do is to, I guess, overcome this hurdle is write down very briefly, maybe one sentence for each, what happened, how did you solve it, what was the result, what was the evidence, and then you practice that as an example, and you time yourself. How long did it take me? Did it take me 10, 15 minutes? Okay, it's a bit long. Because, again, you want to be concise. That's the key. Because they will ask you follow-up questions to get more data from you. But it's very important that you communicate this in a, in a way that is easy to digest, easy to understand. Because I thought about this, you know, Jana. One of the, more, the I guess, biggest differentiators for a, a candidate passing the interview process successfully, outside of their technical capabilities, okay, outside of their, I guess, hard skills, is soft skills and their communication style. So if they can communicate really well, the chance of in, getting hired is so much higher. So if you know, I'm not good at this, you need to improve it. You need to see career coach, for example, what I do with my clients is I teach them the skills, but I also do role play with them. And I give them feedback, honest feedback of what happened and how, how we did it. So they would, I guess, give the answer. And I would say then, it took 10 minutes, mate. Okay, this is how we could improve it. And then they do it again, all of a sudden eight minutes. Okay, cool. It was very different. And then five minutes. And then they, they feel much more confident as well. Again, the confidence during the interview. Yeah. yeah. Hope that helps. And if you practice, you know, at least if you have in, on the back of your mind, there's at least like three examples of different situations, then no matter what yeah. interview you're going to, like, you know, the at least one of the example will fit, will fit, will fit the description. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's a similar questions. It's about, you know, questions about then, you know, difficult situation and the project didn't go like you wanted, or, you know, there was some troubleshooting or something. So, so is, there is not that many star questions someone can ask you. That's true. Um, and, you know, it's like once you, got, once you get it, the way to, I guess, communicate in this way, you can apply it to any situation. You don't need to have samples ready, you know. It's not the idea. You want to be authentic and you want to be in the in the moment when you're giving these answers. It's not like you're not reading off a sheet because that's also not good. So you, you need to internalize the method and then you can apply it for for the, for the real interview, you know? Yeah, adapted, adapted for the each situation. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I hope, Marat, we, we, you know, we answer your question about the difficulty <laughs> applying in the interview um, and uh, you know, really encourage you know, to actually sit down, practice and talk it through with, the, with your dog, if you have one. <laughs> 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 or with the mirror that some people mirror. don't like. No, don't like but, that. But, you know, it's challenging, challenging, but it helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Eli, so just the questions about the time as well. So we almost at, you know, 44 minutes in our live stream. So I think we have, you know, few more tips to cover, um, you know, before, before we summarize everything, uh, we did cover, you know, most of the things, but okay. So I know you have a few extra tips here to impress <laughs> people during the interview. Um, so what, what did we forget? What we haven't mentioned yet? Mm. Let's see. Um, we talked about quite a few things already. You can see the last point, <laughs> balance the read. Um, yep. I think uh, maybe I can sum it up, Jana. You know, we talked about most of mm -hmm. these uh, already. Um, mm -hmm. What I want you to take away today is this. I need to have, I need to prepare. I can't just wing it during an interview. Okay. The, because the interviewer, whoever it is will tell if it's does if it doesn't come natural to you then they will tell as well so you need to prepare like an exam um communication is very important okay cool then i need to work on my star method i need to have good examples ready 
write these examples down in bullet points, whatever works for you. Cool. Practice these examples. And hopefully by then you will feel a bit more confident and you will have an idea on, okay, this is what I've done for my company. These are the awesome achievements that I had. This is the impact that I had. And these were the results. And this is how, I guess, it changed people's life or workflow or process, whatever. Once you have all of that information, this is all more behavioral. It's not technical. So technical interview is a bit different. So you would prepare differently for that one as well. But again, it goes back to preparation. If it's technical. And then if you have done all of that, you will feel more confident, more at ease. And you, you know, Jana, what I, what I hear a lot when I speak to candidates or clients, they get nervous. So if you are a candidate or a person that gets nervous doing interviews, I would recommend you to, to do the following. Um, hype yourself up. That could help you again to feel more confident. But I encourage people to tell the interviewer, hey, interviewer, just so you know, I'm a little bit nervous. This is a very important interview for myself. But I just wanted to know, I'm going to give my best, but at least you know. And this is going to help the interviewer maybe adjust their com communication style and be a bit more mindful. And at least they now know. Otherwise, they, because they never met you, they could interpret your behavior in a wrong, different way. So at least share that you're nervous. And what helps me personally when I interview is I look at, for example, you, Jana, and I think this could be my future colleague. Uh, you know, I could be, you know, having a coffee soon with her. Uh, so this helps me personally. I, I feel like I already know you. That calms me down and I have a better conversation. I hope this could work for you. Yeah, it basically comes down that, you know, talking with our human. So bringing yeah. them to that level. So, um, you know, obviously some interviews still can be quite formal. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you need to be like a really kind of, you know, super formal, <laughs> just answering the questions um, uh, and uh, trying to get like right answers. And I think that that's um, one of the mistakes as well. People trying to look for right mm. answers on the interviews. Mm -hmm. And yes, obviously with some like technical questions and coding challenges, uh, yeah, there would be some incorrect answers there. But if we're talking about, you know, the, the some sort of experience questions and um, I don't know, talking about your strengths or talking about some examples, there is no really right or wrong answers. So and and I think it's really noticeable that someone trying to give the right answer instead of actually just trying to talk as like trying to tell the the you know the true story or like what actually happened. So it's, it is quite noticeable Definitely. when people just like trying to find the right answer instead of just saying like, I don't know, like I haven't been in this situation. It's something new yeah. for me. Uh, like, you know, uh, I would love to work with this, but just haven't had a chance. And, you know, these sort of answers that just give that, um, um, show the interviews that you are a real human as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's so true. Um... And in my personal experience, you know, having seen over a thousand people interview and get roles, every time the person gets to the next level because they're authentic and they're not trying to be someone else in the interview, you know? Because imagine you fake it and then you're there and then you're all of a sudden someone else. It's like, did I just hire this person? So you, you want to be authentic. You want to be able to say, I don't know. And I remembered something also very important. Ding, light is on. Um, <laughs> you need to clarify because interviewing is very hard virtual. And if you don't understand the question and you answer it, the answer might be wrong. You went in the wrong direction. That's really bad because now you get a wrong answer or they didn't get the right signals. So you, if you didn't understand the question, just say, um, sorry, I didn't get that. Could you please repeat the question um, or rephrase? Uh, it was hard to understand. There was a signal distortion or something. So yeah. that's very important to just remember. It. Or it's simply like maybe if you're not exactly sure what the interview is asking you, just yeah. uh, repeat the question and uh, say like, um, did I understand correctly that you, mm. you know, asking me about such and such uh, instead mm. of just uh, mumbling around and trying to give some sort of right. answer that the questions that you didn't even fully understand. Because, you know, interviewers are people as well. So sometimes yeah. uh, you're asking questions and the question seems obvious, but just because you use 
I don't know, different uh, jargon or some different words or put, put it uh, in a certain way. Maybe person worked with those, I don't know, technology or something before, but maybe not exactly called it this way or not exactly in this capacity. So there is no harm into clarifying and saying, are you talking about this? Or am I understanding correctly that that's the technology we're talking about or we're talking a completely different thing? Nice. Very good. Um, clarifying. And the, the next thing after that, maybe that's the last thing, is confirm with them. Hey, uh, do you want me to go deeper into this topic? Um, did you get all the answers that you needed? Just confirm and you know, okay, uh, then the interior might say, can you please explain a bit more about X? Oh, no, I got all the information. Thank you so much. It's also really good. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it, keep it as a, still as a, as a conversation. Um, mm. the, you know, and that's basically, that's what build this rapport. Because if you're just there, like sitting, asking for the questions being thrown to you, that's what's going to happen. It's the questions. It's transactional. <laughs> <will get. laughs> yeah. So, you, so you, yeah. you're waiting for a question to be thrown to you. The question will be like, kept like a robot. thrown to you. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. But, no, and, no. yeah. But you can also... Uh, by replying, you know, by, by asking these clarifying questions, you can also be a bit cheeky and you can, you know, get the conversation <laughs> going to the, you know, going to the um, area that you're more comfortable with and familiar with, you know, like if you're more comfortable yeah. with about some technology, you can always stay away that way a little bit and, you know, tell about project you've been excited, you know, just yeah, not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not too far, but you can always, uh, you know, manage the conversation in a way that um, more beneficial for you. Yeah, or it might even buy you time to think, you know, by doing that. So, so never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I think it's, it seems to be subtle. It's, you not suddenly like start talking about yeah, completely yeah. different technology or something, but there is like so many ways you can suddenly like uh, change the direction of the conversation into area that you're more comfortable with. Definitely nice. Yeah. 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 There you go. Um, so I think we've, you know, covered covered a lot of tips today. Um, guys, if you have any last questions, please uh, put it in the comments. So happy, happy to answer any like you know, one or two more questions before we wrapping up for tonight. Um, so don't be shy. And um, before, um, you know, before uh, we're going to wrap it up tonight, as usual, we're going to do a quick um, quick giveaway. And the quick giveaway is usually is a virtual coffee chat with Eli, so he can, uh, you know, there's the opportunity to connect with him and, uh, you know, pick his brain about, the, about all these um, questions that we talk about. Um, so um, um, while... Uh, yeah, so while I'm going to talk about the future events, Eli, do you want to uh, pick the winner? I'm sure. <laughs> so you look at that, you look at the things. I'll do the announcement for, um, I'll do the announcement for next year while you're picking the winner. So guys, yeah. just quickly, um, this is, today is basically the last live stream of 2022. So we almost at Christmas time. You see, I already have a Christmas lights behind me. So uh, today is the last, <laughs> the last live stream of 2022. Next week on Wednesday, um, I'm going to have drinks with the speakers. So if you're regular at my live streams, please message me and I can send you an invite as well. Uh, it's a closed event. It's not an open meetup. So please reach out if you want to join. Um, so that will be next Wednesday, 14th of um, December. And then basically I'm going to be back oh, and it's incorrect, <laughs> incorrect banner, forgive me, but uh, we're going to talk with Gillian on the 1st of February. So, and we're going to talk about how to write your LinkedIn profile to boost your career, um, IT career. So everything about LinkedIn with Gillian and it will be 1st of February. Ignore the date on the, on the screen. So, um, so basically, yeah, I'm having quite a bit of a holiday. So there's no point Deserved. doing live streams in January. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Everyone in holiday mode. So, um, Eli, did you choose the, have you chosen the winner for the coffee chat? Yeah, let's go with Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca, so yes. She has an yeah. interview as well. 
Yes, exactly. So she'll definitely benefit um, benefit from the chat with you before before her interview next week. Um, and we have one more question actually from yeah. Sobet. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I'm wondering how to discuss about salary expectation in the interview. Good question. Uh, it's very important to know as well. Um, you need to know exactly what your minimum salary expectations are at, at base level. So, because th there's a risk if you don't communicate this, that they might offer you the role, but it's way lower than what you would accept. So at least know your base salary, what you would accept if they were to offer you. You don't have to say this number right away, but at least have this in your mind. Um, you could ask, a lot of recruiters will try to get the information out of you first, but you could also ask them, what is the range for this position that you're looking for? They might give you the number, they might not, depending on the company, but at least you have asked. If they don't give you the number, at least do your research of the role that you're going to apply for and what is the market value at the moment for that role. Um, there's a lot of information out there. I can share them with you, say that later if you want to. Um, but yeah, make your, do your research, ask the question, and then know exactly what your minimum is and at what point you're going to be flexible. You know, sometimes you want to get the job, you know, the role, the company, and you might sacrifice a bit of salary to, to get in. You need to know where that, I guess, that limit is for yourself. <clears throat> but try to be always, you know, I'm on this and this is what I'm expecting for the next role. I also feel like when you give range, it's quite good. So yeah. that give you a bit of a like flexibility to negotiate. I think like giving, um, you know, if you're talking recruiter, giving a range uh, probably would be, you know, the the, the good tip. Um, yeah. It probably will be a bit trickier once you're already interviewing with the direct with the company when they're asking about expectations. So a bit more probably need to be more to the point there. But, does, yeah, that, does that answer, answer your question, Sebat? Is that, is that good? Yeah, yeah. Let us know. Let us know if it made sense. And um, he is saying, great to know that because English is my second language, I'm worried if I can't um, get what the interviewer asked me about, I'll ask the interviewer to rephrase it. He said, you're not the only one. It's all <laughs> English yeah, is second language in the for us <laughs> both. We're all in the same boat here. So <laughs> That's okay, mate. But, it's, it's not a big problem, you know. Um, you're trying, you, you know, you're learning, uh, asking your phrase is really good and no one is going to look bad, bad at you because you don't speak English properly. It's it's not a problem at all in Australia. We've all been there. We've all been there. And yeah, first few years when you move to another country is always challenging yeah. and it, it does better. take some time, but yeah, it gets better. <laughs> that's, that, that's exactly the right point. It gets better. So, you know, just... Uh, uh, don't be, you know, don't freeze and uh, think like, oh my God, I understand anything. Exactly. Like ask two people to replace, clarify, ask them if you, if you understood them correctly. Um, and so we're say, uh, saying, yes, thank you so much. We did answer this question. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, but obviously guys, feel free to reach out to um, Eli. I'm going to post uh, the link to his website. In the comments as well um so if you want to learn more about what he's doing so you can uh, reach out also via linkedin or email so just um, put in the screen at the moment um so eli what's the what's the best way to communicate with you um probably if it's urgent for you email me if it's not urgent connect with me on linkedin yep cool and I've just posted the um, link to the website as well in the comments oh, um, on um, onto, uh, Eli's website. So make sure to check it out. And uh, I'm sure you find some value there as well. And we have a minute and a half, no, one minute of our live stream left. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for joining us tonight. If you get some value from today's live streams, make sure to like this video. So if you like this video, it's encouraging me to keep going. So make sure to, you know, press this like button, subscribe to the channel, all these things, you know, like, yes, yes, subscribe, like, share. And um, Eli, just to put you on the spot at the end of our stream, can you share with us your favorite inspirational quote? Oof. 
be the change you seek. Oh, I just came out. Be the change you seek. Be the change you seek. Here we go. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> no, <I'm not>. <laughs> <laughs> Fake it till you become it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. That's probably better. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Fake it till you become it. Yeah. Be the change. Um, I already forgot. You see? You see? We're talking about English language. You see. I already you forgot should... what you said. Oh, my God. <laughs> You see, guys. Yeah, happy you, holidays, you, everyone. When you forgot something, then it's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it okay. happens. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> so be the change you seek, and I'll see you guys next year. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn while I'm on holidays. I might check LinkedIn sometimes, and feel free to reach out to Eli on LinkedIn as well. Happy Christmas, New Year, and everything. And thanks for uh, having me, Yana. <laughs> Thank you live for joining us no tonight. See you next time. Bye everyone.